Well, I mean, I'm just so honored to meet you. The story of the man who pretty much revitalized the Nike brand is one that millions will learn about very soon with an upcoming movie out called Air. Could you talk about when you were 24 years old, uh, I believe that's around the time that you began this journey, would you have ever thought this much would have come about? Well, you know, when I was 24 years old, I, I started getting involved in basketball. And that was with a high school all-star game in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Then I, then I, my, my years went by then until I met Michael. But that game and, and, and my youth put me in a position later in life to work with Nike and to be, you know, be involved with Michael Jordan's life. So my journey there was uh, one very typical of the era I, you know, I was born. I'm, I'm 83 years old, so I've seen a lot of basketball. The word marketing came along when I met Michael Jordan because Michael put a whole new light on everything that was about to happen after the pursuit of Nike and, and me involved with that. So what I'm saying to you is it took me a minute to get to Michael, but it was always about basketball. And the, the idea of doing something in marketing was always in the back of my mind as I grew. But marketing was not a big word to use in the 70s and 80s, you know, uh, with athletes, especially minorities. So he changed the world in marketing, and Nike was the beneficiary, and my life was better for it. Wow, that's pretty revolutionary. A lot of younger people, even people in my generation, did not realize that Nike has not always been the leading brand. During that time, it was, I believe, a, a Converse, Adidas, and Reebok. Is that correct? You're absolutely right. At the time of signing Michael Jordan in 1984 to a Nike contract, Nike was having rough, rough times. He basically came in and, and not only you know revolutionized marketing, he actually put Nike on a track to become the most powerful. Well, and, and, they're, they're, and what they do in shoes and marketing, no one's better in the world today. But it all began in 1984 with Michael Jordan. Well, Mr. Vaccaro, you have been uh, called the one to revolutionize sports and marketing around sports itself. You are uh, iconic in the industry. What made you choose Michael Jordan? What made you? I know it's all in the story and all in the movie, but what can you share with us about your initial thought? What made you think of him? Well, the night when he was a freshman and they were playing for the national championship, North Carolina played Georgetown. On that night and at that time of, of my life, Georgetown and John Thompson were my favorite you know, coaches and, and teams. I was at the game, and obviously I wanted Georgetown to win. I never met Michael Jordan in my life until I met him later in life. Uh, North Carolina was not a Nike school. I never met Dean Smith in my life, and also I would never have met Michael family because he didn't play in the All-Star games that I was talking about. What I saw was that game and that shot. In my mind, that shot never left my mind, although people were listening is going to say, well, that's ridiculous, because I had nothing to do with, with you know, Michael or North Carolina. But in the middle of my life, I remembered it only because Nike and Rob Strasser and Peter Moore and Phil Knight invited me to go to Oregon, and they were going to put all their money into one of these athletes, the basketball players, that was going to be, you know, going pro next year. As God is my judge, it happened. They bring me in, and they ask me to have an opinion of who they should sign in the 1984 draft. And out of my mouth came, give it all to the kid. One minute before they asked me that question, I wouldn't have even known I would be speaking of Michael Jordan. That's my point. I knew the other players. I didn't know Charles Barkley, you know, John Stock. They had four guys in, uh, in, that ended up in the Hall of Fame off that, class, uh, that, that particular class. And I said, give it all to the kid. Why did I say that? This is what you're looking for. Because I always remembered that shot that this 18-year-old kid made with 18 seconds, four seconds, down to four seconds, and he take the shots and make the shot. In my mind, that that is still there. But it was never... It was never out in the open. I never talked about it again. I knew who Barkley was. I knew who Akeem was. I knew who Sam Bowie was. I saw them play. I saw Sam play in high school. He played in my All-Star game. But I'm saying to you, it's something I can't explain, but it was in there. 
the subconscious never left me on watching what Michael Jordan did that day. That's incredible. I mean, it's almost like he was destined. And that's why you're the one with a Hollywood movie (laughs) portraying your story. That is incredible. Now, before we get into the movie, I got to ask you a question because we're here in Columbia, South Carolina, and a lot of people are wondering, what does this man have to do with the University of South Carolina? Can you talk about your long-term support for the Department of Sports and Entertainment Management and College Sports Research Institute here at the University of South Carolina? Well, that's the easy one of the best stories of my life because of you know Richard Southall, and that's you know, that's the reason. When he was at the University of Memphis, he would he would he always had this idea about that sort of a class. I I never would have thought of it. And he invited me there to speak, you know, uh, prior to that when he was at Memphis. And it was uh, he brought me in to be a guest speaker because I was an advocate for the athletes at that time. And I was, I was starting to fight for the athletes and, you know, to say that they were getting, you know, messed up by the NCAA and not allowing to have, you know, a lot of things go for them. So I, I knew, you know, Mr. Sato, I knew Richard for a long time. Then when he goes there... I became a regular at, at the at the event he has, you know, the, uh, the every year he's having one again, you know, and I I've been honored by them because they they've named something, but I'm I'm involved because it was a perfect opportunity when I went there and I saw you know the school of business and everything and I, I met everybody over there. South Carolina has the best in the world. You I mean the country. There's no question about it, and I don't think the public would even know about. it. I didn't know about it. So to be involved with him and getting the opportunity to speak to all of the types of individuals that I would never be in contact with and have, you know, before meeting Dr. Southall, I would never have gotten deep with the university. But this university has a special place for me, and, and it helped me in my my continuation of my life with associations with, you know, Richard and, 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 and all the other staff. And everything. Your school is wonderful. Wow. Well, they have the Sony Vaccaro Impact Award as well, that they award individuals who've made a positive impact on college sports by advocating or defining college athletes, fundamental civic and human rights. So obviously they feel the same way about you that that you feel about the university. And um, I'm just so excited about this movie. I know Air, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe, is it Ben Affleck or um, Matt uh, Blakeby? Matt Matt Damon. Damon. (laughs) <laughs> plays me and Ben Ben plays Phil Knight, so those are pretty good. But the the, the key to the movie is Viola Davis playing Mrs. Jordan. That, yes. That, that, yeah, Viola Davis playing Mrs. Jordan, and she's a tough son of a gun, Mrs. Jordan, <laughs> and bright as heck. Yes. So the movie the movie um, it's it's a should be not fun on the personal level. It's what a a family can do and what an individual did. Michael Jordan's change the world of marketing. Everyone can talk about the best basketball player and, you know, this and that and all that stuff. They can have their own particular argument who's the best. But in Sonny Vaccaro's mind, there's only the there's only one person who invented marketing for athletes. There was no question in my mind. It was Michael Jordan. And uh, it can never be duplicated because you can never be before the first, right? The first guy did it all. <laughs> I don't think there'd ever been another company that would give an, an athlete Especially in the age, uh, that, that day, a, a, a minority, a black person, be the head of the company eventually. Michael had a piece of Air Jordan. That's the key, young lady. That's the key. So he was more than just a player who signed with the sneaker company. He was a player who owned part of the company that signed him. That's right. That's the key. That's the only words when it's all said and done for all of us, when it's all said and done with Sonny Vaccaro, one of the you know, things that other than personal life for all of us, our families, the most important thing. In my mind, the guy who was there at the beginning, no one can ever do what Michael did because no one ever did it before him. The key is Michael come out before he's even Michael Jordan jump man with a piece of the company. That's what I'm saying. He changed it. He opened the door for everybody. I mean, my God, who who's doing those things in the, in the 80s? Nike was, and Jordan was the leader. Wow, and you're the man who helped bring that to the forefront. Before we go, I have to ask, how does this make you feel seeing your story on the big screen? 
You know, that, that's, that's something that everyone asks, right? Well, to a kid from Trafford that grew up, you know, I'm 83 years old, so I've seen a lot. I, you know, my family was involved in Second World War. You know, we, we were immigrants also. You know, my family was. And I, so I came through the, those years where a lot of people never had a chance to do a lot of things. I was the first one in, on both sides of my family, Vicaros and Astranis, that ever went to college. So we've heard that story before. So as I sit here all these years later, all these three years later that I can remember in my life, what we have in a mind that doesn't quit, that has ideas, no matter what it is, whether it's sports or business or making medicine or, or skating, whatever the heck they want to do, you can do it. You need a chance to do it, though. So what I'm, what I'm going through now, my wife and I, Pam, we're going through – feeling how good do we feel about what, what you're seeing out there, but how better we feel that will give more motivation to young people, like those kids that go to your university, go to the South Carolina University under that school and learn in all schools. Nothing's impossible. You need breaks. You need, you know, you need to get a chance. But damn it, if you have a chance, you might hit the lottery. That, that's, mm. that's how I feel. I just feel that I think uh, it'll never end. This story won't end. That means the Senator Vicaro somewhere along the line will be given a tagline with the greatest marketing and one of the greatest athletes that ever lived, Michael Jordan. And so that, that's what it does, but it encourages others. You can do it. It's, not, it's hard. I'm not going to, you know, it's hard. It's still hard in 2023. But you know what? You can do it. That's what makes me feel good. Michael, Michael picked me up and said, come on, Sonny, let's go on a ride. I said, thank you, kid. One last thing before we go. I know uh, you were uh, pivotal in convincing several lawyers to file lawsuits against the NCAA. How do you feel now uh, with the NEAL agreements for college players? Well, I feel great, but I also want to say this for the record, okay? It never should have taken this long. The NCAA, to me, look one-sided their whole existence on how to treat the athlete. The fact that they would they would say you don't own your name or anything like this, and they own it and put it in a scholarship paper was one of the most egregious things I ever witnessed in my life. So I'm happy that the kids are out there earning what they're what what's owed them. They 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 work for that university. They work for that school. They work for that coach. But what I'm not happy about is it all could have been worked out if the NCAA would have had the foresight and not the not just worrying about the NCAA properly. And I'm I'm just telling you the truth how I feel. They could have made a deal with the the, the athletes, the athletes while they were playing at their universities, and said you're going to get a percentage of this. In reality, isn't that what we all want to do? earn a living for our family, and why should you be denied it if you have to be 16 or 17 years old and have a special, special quality and ability by being athletic or being a singer or being a dancer? Why can they make money? And a university, a righteous university, who's telling you they want to educate you, deny you, and say we own you? I don't want to say some of the things in my mind because we're talking in South Carolina, but I'm telling you, it's, it's horrible. So I feel good for the athletes. I'm proud that they allowed me and, and uh, you know, Eddie O'Bannon allowed me and the lawyers allowed me to be part of the fight. But I can just tell you, I feel bad for the thousands of athletes that never had a chance to make $5. And some of them never had a chance to get the, get a, an education. They may have gotten a degree or they may not even got that. So you got me going on something. But I don't have any compassion for the NCAA in the way it was run. If they're going to be a partner with someone who attends our university, then they should be a partner with them. These athletes and other members of that university, of all the universities, contribute something. And a lot of times, a lot of these universities are built by the wealth of the men and women who went to them and became good in business, and they make contributions. But to deny somebody earning of what they can do is sinful. I think I said what I had to say.